Help Them Last, Love a Sea Turtle is dedicated to preserving the world's sea turtle population. In North Carolina, the majority of the sea turtle uh, nesting in this area is from loggerhead sea turtles. They mate offshore, usually in the springtime, like around April or early May. Starting around May and more into June, they will start nesting on local beaches. The female will come up onto the beach, she'll crawl out onto the sand um, up above the high tide line, and that's where she'll lay her, um, her nest. When she comes up onto the beach, she will uh, dig a nest, usually a foot or two underground with her back flippers, and then she'll deposit usually around 100 to 120 eggs in the sand, covered up completely so you wouldn't even know that it was there, and then she returns to the sea. Once she's laid the nest, she never comes back to check on it. She never does any kind of maternal care. Those um, turtles are completely on their own. Now once those eggs are in the sand, they will incubate in the sand uh, for anywhere from two to three months. Those nests are actually monitored by volunteers and a number of different organizations that help to protect sea turtles. And so they'll just watch over that nest. They will often rope it off so that people won't uh, walk on it or dig in that area. The volunteers are often on the beaches during the hatching process. Uh, so that they can protect the hatchlings in any way uh, that they can. In most cases, it's just to, uh, to inform other beachgoers of what's going on and allow them to crawl from um, the nest all the way down to the ocean. Hi, I'm Casey Sokolovic, founder of Help Them Last, Love a Sea Turtle, an organization dedicated to preserving the world sea turtle population. Did you know that for every 1,000 eggs that hatch, only one sea turtle will make it to adulthood? Mankind has done so much to harm the sea turtles that we must now assist to ensure their survival. Will you lend a helping hand? These newly born turtles are headed out to the sea and are one of the Earth's beautiful creatures and it takes many years for them to reach maturity. And with your help, they will last. Like me, there are people out there dedicated to preserving the world's sea turtle population, such as Jane Beasley, the director of the Karen Beasley Sea Turtle Rescue and Rehabilitation Center. Named in memory of my daughter, Karen Beasley, who was the founder of the beach monitoring program. And uh, it was her insurance money when she passed away that built this building. She left us quite a challenge and quite a legacy. Uh, she nor I had any vision of a sea turtle hospital. Uh, it was a sea turtle who caused the sea turtle hospital to exist. Our first effort was in the backyard of one of our volunteers who lived on the Sound. And it was not very long before people knew that we had a turtle under care. We had number two and then number three and then number four and five. And it became very obvious that this was a need and um, we didn't have a lot of choice. We had to try to, to fill it because we did care about the turtles. It was a third grade field trip to the Sea Turtle Hospital that inspired me into action. Since then, I have baked thousands of cookies, held events, and donated as much time and effort as possible to raise money and awareness for the turtles. I have also helped out by volunteering and interning at the Sea Turtle Hospital. Did you know that there are seven recognized species of sea turtles and they're all listed on the Endangered Species Act? Here are some of my devoted friends and myself at the Sea Turtle Hospital to describe the different species. This is Lenny. Lenny is an eight-year-old Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. He came to our facility about five years ago with a skull fracture. He'd actually been caught in a fishing net and we think someone tried to get him out using a pole of some sort. And unfortunately that did fracture his skull and actually damage his optic nerve. So Lenny's completely blind in both eyes, which unfortunately means he can never be released. But he's actually adapted really well to his disability. When we feed him, he likes to spin in a circle in the center of his tank, which pushes all of his food to the outside edges so he can just munch along as he finds it. And he also has a favorite spot in his tank. It's on the pipe that drains out his water because it's kind of a security blanket for him. He knows exactly when he's there. But he will be with us for the rest of his life, which for Kemp's Ridley's can be anywhere from 80 to 100 years. This is Ocean's Eleven, and Ocean's Eleven is a female loggerhead sea turtle, and she weighs about 150 pounds, and she was hit by a boat, and the boat crushed her shell into several pieces, and when we found her, it was, her shell was just really bad off, 
and so we sent her to NC State so that way they could put metal brackets like this on her shell and she had 11 of those surgically put on and that's how she got her name, Ocean's Eleven. And as you can see, her shell is much better now. There are no brackets left on and so she's doing much better now. This right here is Ranger. Ranger is a five-year-old green sea turtle. He is the same teen turtle that you see in Finding Nemo. He came to us about two years ago um, after a shark decided that he made a tasty snack and took a bite out of his left flipper. Uh, before that, about a year prior, we thought that he uh, was hit by a boat. He had an injury to the back of his shell, which um, ended up growing over and he has air stuck in the back of his shell, which is why he floats up a little bit more. And we think that the boat attack is what made him more susceptible to the shark attack. Ranger is unreleasable, what will probably end up in a very happy home in an aquarium. There are four other species of sea turtles that are not native to North Carolina. The olive wrigley is olive colored, which is where its name comes from, and is the smallest of all the species growing no more than three feet long and 110 pounds. The hawksbill is medium size and has a very long shell and a relatively small head that seems out of proportion to the rest of its body. It has a beak-like mouth and is generally about three feet long and 300 pounds. One sea turtle that scientists know little about is the flatback. They are found mainly in Australia and migrate to breeding grounds that are hundreds of miles away from their normal habitat. The final and largest type of sea turtle is the leatherback. It can grow up to 8 feet in length and up to 2,000 pounds. Are you going to the beach soon and want to help out the sea turtles? If so, you can contribute in several ways. Clean up all trash, even if it's not yours. Keep pets on leashes at all times. Do not leave large items on the beach overnight. Fill in and smooth the sand. No holes or sand castles overnight. Keep your outside lights off at night and volunteer your beach's sea turtle patrol. And if you're not going to the beach, there are still several ways you can contribute. Reduce the amount of plastic garbage you produce. Tell people how helium balloons harm sea turtles as they mistakenly eat the balloons and die. Reduce the amount of chemicals you use. Write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper to inform the community about the plight of sea turtles and other marine wildlife. Or write letters to or call your elected officials to show support or opposition for particular issues affecting sea turtles. Our actions on land create reactions in the ocean, good and bad. It's an upstream-downstream connection, so let's protect and preserve our oceans. One person can make a difference, and every person should try. It's your turn now. Have a dream and make a plan and get going, because they're counting on you. Why are you still here? You need to go. Get going.